Tail End Charlie, Mick Manning, and Britta Grandstrom. Tail End Charlie, bumpy roads, snowy days, and fried eggs reminded my dad of a time when the whole world was at war. Nowadays, World War II is a history lesson, but for my dad and millions of others, it was real life. They had to go and fight. This is his story as he told it to me when I was a boy. Mick. War Begins, 1939. Poached, fried, boiled, or scrambled, I always loved eggs. But when I was a teenager, World War II broke out and fresh eggs were suddenly hard to come by. Shops only sold dried egg powder. Ugh. Mom mixed the egg powder with water and cooked the mess. It tasted horrible. You needed ration coupons to buy most things. I joined the civil deference, delivering messages, putting up barrage balloons. Sometimes I'd bring friends home for coca. Hold on tight. Will the balloon stop the German bombers, Dad? Will the bombs make our ceiling fall down, Dad? We'll be all right, flowers. Recruits, 1943. It was in the boy's own comic that I read about the raft getting real fried eggs for breakfast. That made my mind up. As soon as I was old enough, I enlisted to train as an air gunner. I was going to be one of Churchill's Breichlum boys. All men over 18 were called up to fight Hitler's Nazis. But first I was taught. Parading and saluting. Always salute an officer. Marching. And how to spit and polish. The medical wasn't very difficult. 28. OTU. After square bashing, we were sent to 28 OTU, an operational training unit, where we were assembled in a big aircraft hangar and told to pal up. I met three blokes looking for a tail gunner, Bill, Calm, and Patty. When they heard my name was Charlie, they grinned, because the nickname for a tail gunner really was Tail End Charlie. As a new crew, we got shooting, flying, and navigation practice. Worst of all was ditching drill, how to survive a crash landing in the sea. We floundered around a cold swimming pool and full kit until we were exhausted. The instructor would duck us under before hauling us into the dinghy. We had target practice in a turret on wheels. I felt like a drowning puppy. Makes it easier to pull you up. Are you looking for a tail gunner? I'm a navigator. Welcome to the crew, Charlie. I'm Bill and that's calm behind me. Call me Patty. We'll start training ops in the morning, sir. Dear mom and dad, learn some raft slang. Bandit, an enemy fighter. Bang on, right on target. Gone for a Burton, killed in action. Hot potato, a risky operation. In the drink, to land in the sea. Op, operation or mission. May West, an inflatable life vest. Piece of cake, an easy operation. Skipper, the pilot. Wizard, brilliant. Wizard Prang, a successful op. Night Ops. During night training with Wellington bombers, I made a beginner's mistake. I was swiveling my tail turret around, keeping watch for enemy fighters, and I leaned back to get comfy, but I hadn't fastened the turret doors properly, and worst of all, I'd forgotten to strap myself in. What a scare. My mates teased me for weeks. Our last training op was a real mission over enemy-occupied Holland to drop window. These blackened foil strips confused German radar, giving other RAF squadrons a chance to fly undetected by night fighters. Take off. Takeoff was like the rattliest bus journey on the bumpiest road in the world. The noise was deafening, and when the bomber left the ground, your stomach fell into your sheepskin boots. No hanging around tonight, Charlie. I was hanging out of our speeding bomber, and it looked a long way down. At the briefing, we'd be shown weather reports, maps, and photos of our target. The target for tonight, gentlemen. We called the full moon a bomber's moon. Frozen chocolate. We scattered the window, bang on target, high over Holland. As we turned for home, I relaxed and opened my chocolate ration. It was so cold up there that the chocolate froze like a brick. 
There I was, sucking frozen chocolate, thinking that the op had been a piece of cake when Bill, our skipper, suddenly came on the intercom. He said one engine had stopped working. I peered out of my turret. It felt lonely back there with only the moon for company. The window went out in bundles to be scattered by the slipstream. Piece of cake, Skip. Navigator here, Skip. Window's gone, setting a course for home. Skipper to crew. One engine's packing up. Keep your eyes peeled, tail gunner. You had to suck the frozen chocolate to melt it. Bandit. Then, in the moonlight, I spotted an enemy fighter following us. I muttered a warning to the crew and gripped the handles of my machine guns. I was expecting the worst. I'd heard fighters picked off the tail gunner first. Sitting in my plexiglass turret, I felt like a goldfish in a bowl stalked by a black cat. He stayed on our tail as we limped home, but he never attacked us, and when we reached England, he just flew away. Tail gunner to skipper. Bandit at six o'clock. Belgium, 1944. When we landed, we found we were the only crew to complete the mission. Next day, we were told we'd been selected for the second tactical air force. It was goodbye to night flying. We were retrained to fly the B-25 Mitchell. We were posted overseas to join 180 Squadron stationed at Melsbroek. It's Brussels Airport now, but back then it was a war-torn Belgian airfield just recaptured from the Germans. After every op, crews got debriefed too. Any scrap of information might be useful. It was a wizard praying. Our engine packed up over the North Sea. We only got home, thanks to Bill. At Melsbroek, air gunners got detailed briefings. Expect heavy flat care. I watched the ground crew load us up with bombs. Bill had his camera and we posed for a photo. Before takeoff, the skipper checked the instruments. This was it. Trim, set. Mixture, okay. Pitch, set fine. Fuel, taps full on. Flaps, lowered. Gills closed. Gyro compass, set. Autopilot, off. Generators, on. Superchargers, on. Oil cookers, closed. Seat, locked, ready for takeoff. These Mitchells are the bee's knees. First stop, gazing out through the first gun window high above Belgium, the fluffy clouds looked like mashed potato. Far below, the patterns of autumn fields were like an abstract painting or a patchwork quilt. It all seemed so peaceful, but we were on our way to bomb a bridge used by enemy troops. We were going to try to kill people, and they were going to try to kill us. Some Spitfires protected the bombers. Others flew high over enemy targets and took photographs. Other second TAF aircraft included these Typhoon tank busters. We blew in a box of six aircraft. Each had a different code lettering like S for sugar or N for nuts. EV was 180's identification markings. Flak. As we approached the target, enemy anti-aircraft guns fired up a barrage of flak. It looked like cotton wool from a distance, black candy floss. Flying into it, we found a nightmare of explosions and filthy smoke that stank of rotten eggs. Our plane shook with every blast and chunks of shrapnel whizzed through the sky. We watched in horror as other planes got hit and went down in flames. One Mitchell exploded in a blinding flash. Another had a wing blown off and spiraled like a sycamore seed. Off duty. The ops went on and so did the casualties. Mates we'd been joking with at breakfast suddenly gone forever. How did we cope? We played cards and sports. We had nights out in town holding parties and cafes. We sang silly songs and acted the goat, plonking out tunes on an old piano. We sang to remember and sang to forget. We sang for our lives. There were rats. Rats, twice as big as cats, in the store, in the store, in the quartermaster's store. How did we ever relax? The naffy supplied hot drinks and sandwiches. We lived in an old convent. Patty and I played in the 180 Squadron soccer team. Fireworks. On one op, I began to feel drowsy, and I had an orchestra in my head playing my requests. On the way home, I saw colored lights in the sky. I thought it was fireworks, but it was Tracer from a Messerschmitt 109. That woke me up. I fired back, but the fighter passed my window like a streak of lightning. 
It was Bill that got us out of trouble dodging our plane into the darkening clouds. Back at base, we found our plane was full of machine gun holes. The mechanics discovered a fault in my oxygen supply, too. That explained my hallucinations. Look, Skip, fireworks. That's not fireworks, Charlie. It's Tracer. I fired back, but I might as well have been firing water pistols. Battle of the Bulge Snow choked the airfield that winter. That's when the Germans made a surprise counterattack that came to be called the Battle of the Bulge. They pushed forward and encircled many Allied troops, but the Americans held out against the odds. We did all we could to help the brave Yanks, but my war was about to come to a sudden end. The commander of the American troops was asked to surrender by the Germans. This was his famous reply. Nuts? The ground crews worked hard clearing the runways and repairing damaged aircraft. The control tower made sure we all took off and landed safely. 13th Op. We were flying through heavy boxed flak, raiding Tiger Tank Supply Depots when it happened. I remember us making the bombing run and hearing Calm say, Bomb doors open, left, left, steady, steady, bombs gone. Then a shell burst close by. Chunks of shrapnel punched through the aircraft. Bill's windscreen shattered. Filthy smoke rushed in, and then something hit me in the face. It was like being kicked by an elephant. I blacked out. I heard later that Bill had wrestled the plane back under control before checking everybody was okay on the intercom. When I didn't reply, he sent Patty to find me. Calm okay? Okay, Skip. Patty okay? Okay, Skip. Charlie okay? Patty found me lying in a pool of blood. How's Charlie? He's a bloody mess, but he's alive. RAF Hospital, 1945. Back at the airbase, I was rushed away in a RAF ambulance. When I woke up again, it was Christmas Day. The doc came and showed me my broken oxygen mask. It had taken the full force of the impact. I'd smashed my jaw, but I could have lost my head. When my wounds had healed, the commanding officer must have thought I'd done enough because he didn't send me back. He posted me to a desk job in England instead, and that's where I met Muriel Jones. The war ended six months later. I was a lucky boy. My war ended with peace and love, and that's how all war should end. They had to operate to remove the shrapnel, but I was lucky to be alive. You're a lucky lad. Muriel Jones was a WAF wireless operator. It was love at first sight, but that's another story. Charlie Manning and Muriel Jones got married, and they had four kids, including me. Dad gave away his flying jacket to a pal who had a motorbike. Mom gave her uniform to a jumble sale. But like millions of other people, they kept their stories safe to pass on to us. How can we forget stories like that? Mick. Glossary. Second TAF. The Second Tactical Air Force was made up of many fighter and bomber squadrons. After D-Day in 1944, 2nd TAF became the daylight air support for the Allied troops. Nazi leaders later admitted the 2nd TAF were crucial in their defeat. Air Gunner. Machine gunners who defended the bombers against fighters. Allies. Countries fighting on the same side. Britain's allies included Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada, and Russia. Germany's allies included Italy and Japan. Anti-aircraft guns. Fired explosive shells set to burst at bomber height, scattering chunks of red-hot shrapnel across the sky that could smash a bomber to pieces or set it on fire. B-25 Mitchell. American-made bombers popular with the crews that flew them. Barrage Balloon. Carried thick cables into the sky to deter low-flying bombers. Battle of the Bulge. A clever counterattack by the Germans that took the Allies by surprise in December 1944. Bill, Calm, Charlie, and Patty all survived the war. Bill went on to be a senior pilot for Air New Zealand, and Charlie became a headmaster in Kiley, Yorkshire. Bombers, planes that drop bombs on enemy targets. Boys own comic. British comic of the 1940s filled with unrealistic, romanticized stories about war. Briefing, debriefing. Information about weather, dangers, and targets given to or brought back by air crews before and after an operation. Briocrim an oily hair cream fashionable at the time. Chocolate. Raft bomber crews got sandwiches, chocolate, malted milk tablets, and hot drink to take on long bombing raids. Churchill. Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister during the war. 
He was a great leader in those dark days. Civil Defense. Trained volunteers who helped people during the massive bombing raids on British towns by the Luftwaffe. D-Day. In June 1944, despite heavy casualties, the Allied troops landed on French beaches and fought their way inland. The liberation of Europe had begun. Ditching drill. Many planes were lost over the sea. It was important to learn how to survive in the water. Dunkirk. A seaside town in France, where in 1940, despite merciless attacks from the advancing Germans, thousands of retreating British and French troops were rescued by ships and small boats. Fighters. Planes that attack the enemy with guns or rockets. Flak, the name given to the smoky explosions of anti-aircraft guns. Ground crew, included fitters, mechanics, and engineers. They were essential to keep the squadron flying. Hallucination, seeing or hearing something that is not really there. Intercom, the crew could talk to each other on the intercom. Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, its planes were some of the best in the world. Mills broke, one of many European air bases taken over by the Allies as the Germans retreated. Squadrons included 180, 98, and 320. Messerschmitt, one of the most deadly German fighters of the war. Caffey, short for Navy Army Air Force Institution. It served hot drinks and snacks to troops. Navigator, red maps, plotted the route, and was in charge of dropping the bombs. Nazis, a political party led by Adolf Hitler. They came to power in Germany in the 1930s by encouraging racism and patriotism and promising jobs and prosperity. They created a huge German army invading many European countries. They arrested and murdered Jewish people, gypsies, and anyone who disagreed with them. Millions of men, women, and children were gassed or shot in special death camps. Some Germans opposed the Nazis, but many kept silent through fear of Hitler's terrible secret police, the Gestapo. Operational Training Units where RAF recruits were given combat training. Patriotism, pride in your country. Plexiglass, a sort of plastic used instead of glass. RAF, the Royal Air Force, used fighters like Spitfires and Hurricanes for attack and defense. Despite huge air crew casualties, RAF Bomber Command attacked enemy targets, mostly by night, using bombers like the Wellington, Halifax, and Lancaster. Racism, the idea that one race or color of people is better than another. Ration coupons. German U-boats sunk a lot of the ships bringing supplies to Britain. Food and clothing had to be rationed to make sure everyone got a share. Shrapnel. Deadly chunks of sharp metal from an exploding bomber shell. Squadron. An organized group of fighters or bombers. Square bashing. Basic training including marching and saluting. Tail and Charlie. The air gunner in the tail turret had a very low chance of survival. In some cases, a life expectancy of only three missions. Tracer. Every sixth machine gun bullet might be a tracer, a glowing colored bullet that shows the direction of fire. WAF. Women's Auxiliary Air Force. Waste guns. Some bombers had gunner's windows on both sides to protect the sides of the plane. Wellington. A British-made bomber that was used throughout the war. Wireless operator sent and received messages and often doubled as an air gunner. World War II began in 1939 when the German leader Adolf Hitler ordered his army to invade Poland. Other countries, including Norway, Holland, Belgium, Denmark, Greece, and France, quickly fell to the Germans and their allies, Italy. Britain fought back with help from Australia, India, Canada, and New Zealand. During the Battle of Britain, the RAF successfully defeated the German Luftwaffe forcing the Germans to call off a planned invasion of Britain. The RAF also raided Germany, and Allied soldiers fought in the Middle East and Asia. On 22nd June 1941, Germany invaded Russia. Their allies, Japan, bombed the American Navy at Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December 1941. This brought the huge armies of America and Russia into the war. In 1944, as the Russians fought the Germans on the Eastern Front, an American Britain invaded France, after terrible fighting, Germany finally surrendered in 1945. A few months later, Japan surrendered after America dropped the first atomic bombs. Yanks, a nickname for Americans.